Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Keep It Pro training call brought to you by Networking Wisdom. Each and every Sunday. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Keep It Pro training call brought to you by Networking Wisdom each and every Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific time for the past four and a half years. The purpose of this call is not only to learn skills for success in business and network marketing, but also in life. Thank you for joining. My name is Meredith, and I have the honor and privilege to introduce the creator and host, Mr. Amasio Fulcher. At the age of 25 years old, he made his first millions in mortgage and real estate. Shortly afterwards, he was introduced to network marketing. Because he was an ideal student and learned from the best, he quickly rose to the top. Uh, in fact, he was he has been one of the top 50 MLM income earners in the world. He has over 750,000 people in his organization and has done over a billion dollars in sales. He knows how to make money and he knows how to make it fast. He loves to have fun, but most of all, he loves to share the wisdom he has gained over the years. In fact, he has helped countless individuals make life-changing income all over the world. What I love most about Ramacio is his ability to know exactly what his audience needs to hear each and every time he speaks. I highly suggest that you find a quiet place and grab a pen and paper to take notes because you're going to want to write down and remember these nuggets of wisdom he is going to share today. Without further ado, here is your millionaire mentor, the California kid, Mr. Ramacio Fulcher. Are you there? Absolutely. I'm here. Can you hear me, Meredith? Loud and clear. All righty, thank you so much on your day off for jumping in and being the host of today's call. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. I want to welcome everybody back again for another edition. Here we are, guys, just getting ready to wrap up the second month of the new year, 2021. Can you say that for me? 2021. And I want you to emphasize, instead of saying 2021, I want you to say 2021, as in W-O-N, you've already won here in 2021. Guys, I'm excited to be with you again today. This is going to be another call. Uh, just as the little boy said, can you do another one just like the other one? Well, the answer is absolutely. If you missed us last week, I want to encourage you to go back and re-listen to these calls. Uh, I'm telling you, you know, I think the only thing missing on these calls is my son. I, I just really wish my son, KJ, would be here. I'm praying that something that God will speak to his heart to say, you know what, one day I want to jump on my daddy's call. I want to hear what my father has to say. I listen to all the, you know, the rap music, and he listens to all the other songs, and, you know, he's, you know, he's 16 years old. We all know how we was when we were 16, but I pray that uh, literally one day soon he's going to jump on this call and just be excited, fired up about the information that he's hearing that will, will help him tremendously as well. Because I tell you, these calls, guys, I don't know about you, but I do go back and I re-listen to them. I'm telling you, I'm just the messenger. I'm literally just the messenger. Uh, every time I actually do a call, uh, you may or may not know, I always ask for God's favor on this call. I don't take these calls lightly, if you, if you don't notice. I've been doing this now over four years. I, I'm always very cognizant of all the millions of people that will hear the sound of my voice and I don't know where they may be. They may be in the kitchen cutting up some carrots. They may be at the park, you know, working on their jump shot with the headphones in the ear. You know, they may be dealing with their children, driving down the street. I have no idea where you are in the world uh, right now. But I do know that what I'm talking about is going to penetrate those that have a heart to hear. That I know. You know, it's so interesting. Have you ever... Uh, fell before God and said, God, show me how I matter. Show me what problem that I solve in the world. You know, I see, the, I see the problem that the television solves. I see the problem that social media solves. I see the problem that gasoline solves. I see the problem that, you know, uh, the car I drive solves. But, Lord, can you just show me where it is that I matter? What problem do I solve, right? Have you ever asked that question you know, a lot of times we end up doing all these jobs in our life, and, you know, we, you know we, we do many different things in our life, but it's not until we finally uncover what our true purpose is. 
And I know for some people they find it sooner than later. For those of you that have children, let me give you a prayer that I feed into my kids on a daily basis. This is something that I do. I always say, always, I mean, this is daily. I mean, I'm telling you, if I, if I have a horrible day, there's one thing I can't forget to do, and that's every day. And that is, I always say, I mean, every day I say this, that, that my sons will discover their passion and their purpose early in life. Notice what I said, passion and purpose early in life. Because I think that, look, there's nobody on this, in this world that's going to have a perfect life, none of us. None of us are going to get out of this lifetime without some, br- some bumps, bruises, scars, and all that stuff. So you can forget about that, baby, okay? I know you've been working on your, you've been working on your legs and working on your muscles and you're eating your, 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 your spinach and all that stuff and your protein shakes. Look, I'm encouraging all of that, but I'm also letting you know, look, in your greatest attempt to put all that skin stuff on your skin and look all pretty, I'm telling you, you don't get to get out of this lifetime, not this one, baby, not this one, without a few bumps and bruises. Oh, but, 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 but I don't understand, Romancio. What if I don't mess with anybody? What if I don't cause any problems? I'm a pretty peaceful person. You mean to tell me it, I, I, I'm still going to get a few bumps and bruises? Yes. Yes, you, Miss Innocent you, Mr. Innocent you. Yes, you don't get to get out of this lifetime without some bumps and bruises. You just don't, okay? And so in saying that to you guys, I'm really, really excited about what we're going to be discussing here today uh, because today is going to be such a meaning, meaning, meaningful call. I would love for you, as I asked you to do last week, make sure you share this uh, with some people. Make sure you share this with some people. I can tell you, each and every single one of you that are listening, I really, truly appreciate you. I appreciate you for maybe you heard about this call from a friend. Maybe you've been with us for a while. But just for you tuning in, just to hear what is it that God is going to say through me to reach you today? What is it that God is going to say through me to reach you today? I really appreciate you just for jumping on. And, again, going back to that, that, that moment ago about purpose, you know, literally it is such an amazing feeling when you know that you have discovered your why for living. You've discovered your purpose. And I, if there's anything that I could scream and encourage all of you to to, uh, to find quickly, that is your purpose. I'm telling you, look, I, I can't promise you that you're going to be a billionaire. I can't promise you that you're going to be a multimillionaire. That's your decision to make. But I can promise you the joy will fill your heart. The joy. I didn't say happiness. There's a difference between happiness and joy. It will fill your heart the moment you uncover what your true purpose in this lifetime is. Do you know there are... There are hundreds of millions of people on planet Earth, hundreds of millions. And, and sometimes when you really think about that, sometimes if you let the devil get to your mind, the devil will convince you you're nobody. You, 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 don't, you, you don't matter. You're just a nobody. But that's not true. That's not true. God has already defeated the devil, okay? He's already been defeated, and God doesn't make any mistakes. And I know that, you know, we're human beings, and we're always trying to understand our life and rhyme or reason why this happened or didn't happen. We all do that. I do it too. But it's not until we fall on our face and fall before God and say, God, help me. Give me wisdom to understand what my purpose is. God, help me put some of the pieces together and help me make it make sense. And you know what the funny thing is? I mean, this is so funny. I'm serious, guys. Uh, we all are human beings, and anxiety reaches our doorstep at various different seasons in our life, uh, you know. And I can tell you, it is just, I mean, it just, it amazes me. I'm just being honest with you. It really amazes me that all of the answers, you know, you you ever sit there and say, hey, I want some answers. I want some answers. I need an answer. You ever felt like that before? I want to understand why this happened to me. You ever get real serious and you're just like, I want some answers. I want to know what does it take for my next promotion. I want to know, you know, this and that. And I want God to give me specific instructions, and just like he did them. And he gave, he gave Moses specific instructions. And, you know, he gave Abraham specific instructions. And he gave, you know, all of these, he gave Noah specific instructions. Well, God, give me specific instructions. Have you ever said that? You ever wanted that? You know, just to understand, and I can tell you what's funny to me 
is that all of the answers from the promotion that you're looking for on your next job or your business to the love of your life to should you stay on that job, should you, should you, should, should you leave and go, go follow your passion, to, you know, you know, should you be more active in, 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 in your community, you know, where should you, where, what, what, what church should you choose to go and do your worship with, to, you know, should I really, really buy that house right now? Should I put more money away? Should I pay a little bit more in, ta- in taxes? Listen, guys, all of our issues, every single one of our issues, it amazes me. I'm 43 years young, and it amazes me to tell you all of the answers are inside of the Bible. I mean, it's just crazy. You know, look, you know, you know I, I got parents. You know, I grew up in the church and all that stuff, you know, and that doesn't – I don't say that to impress anybody. Uh, the only thing that that did for me is it, it taught me, you know, it just had me in the right environment, you know, and thank God for that. So definitely better than not doing it, but it doesn't give me any guarantees in life just because you grew up in the church and you heard it. Just because you hear the word, that's cool, but it's not until you live the word, do the word, that, you know, transformation happens in your life. So don't think that you have any major advantages just because you say, I grew up in the church. Remember, I told you I had my first kiss in the church. Now go figure that, right? So my point in saying that to you is that, all of my life, you know, you hear my, my, my family, and I hear, you know, I hear, you know, uh, people that I look up to, oh, yeah, it's in the Bible, it's in the Bible, it's in the Bible, it's in the Bible, and you hear this stuff. Oh, the answer's in the Bible, the answer's in the Bible, and I don't know what it is. It's almost like it just goes in one ear and out the other because a lot of the times when someone is prematurely telling you something, or let me say it this way, when someone is prematurely giving you the answer to something before you need that something, you tend not to remember it. It's like you don't want to hear the answer until you really need it. And then when you need it, you're scrambling around trying to find it, and lo and behold, the answer is right where they told you it was at. And so if I could just, if anybody's listening, if anybody can hear me today that's listening to me, I'm talking to those of you that listen to the replay, those of you that stumble across YouTube or Facebook or however you found your way to this audio, uh, I'm really telling you the truth. And I'm not here as a holy roller or anything. I'm just, look, I'm, I'm an ordinary man. I, 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 I make mistakes every single day. To be honest with you, I'll probably make uh, more mistakes than most people because I'm a leader. And when you're a leader, you've got to take risks. Okay? So I can tell you, I, I've made a lot of mistakes, and I'm looking forward to making a whole lot more. <laughs> But I can tell you this, if you're listening, no matter where, where, I don't know if it's health-related, spiritual-related, relationship-related, money-related, business-related, community-related, whatever it is, listen to me. I'm telling you, as an imperfect man that I am today, I'm telling you, the answers to our problems are right there in God's Word. Now, with that being said, I also know that the Bible, King James Version, can be very difficult uh, for new people or for people to anybody, not just new people. It can be very difficult to, uh, to comprehend and to understand sometimes. They, yay, you know, here, 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 the other, you know, all these words. You're like, what does it mean? It's almost like, do I got to have the Bible and the Thesaurus and the dictionary right next to me all together? I mean, so I understand. I've been there. I don't, I've read the Bible. I don't know about you. I've, I, I can tell you throughout my years, guys, I have tried to read the Bible uh, and literally fell asleep right there reading it. I, I, I don't <laughs> – I'm serious. I'm, I mean, I'm four pages in, and I just fell asleep, fell asleep. And it wasn't because I was tired. I'm trying to understand what they're talking about, right? So listen, thank God for, once again, men and women of purpose. Thank God for all the different um, variations. Uh, one of the ones that I love the best for me, I'll just tell you guys, it is the uh, – it is the John Maxwell's leadership version of the Bible. Uh, it, talks to you ju- it talks to you just like I'm talking to you right now, breaks it down very simple. I love how it's almost like every three to four pages, there's kind of a summary from uh, John Maxwell of summarizing what you just read and what the leadership takeaways uh, uh, are for you. So I really appreciate that. I, in other words, what I'm saying, there is no excuse they have, I mean, children's Bible. If you're more of a, of a, of a picture person, 
where you like pictures, you know. Sometimes, you know, they, they say a picture, uh, you know, a picture tells a thousand words. You know, there's, there's, there's children Bibles that are picture-related that are very helpful. My, I don't Like Mama said, I don't care how you get it, just get it. I'm letting you know the answers are in there. They truly, truly, truly are. And so as we begin to, to dive into the topic that we're going to get into today, I just wanted to take a few moments to let all of you know that are listening, wherever you're at, whatever season of life you're in right now, whatever it is you're waiting on, praying for, I'm letting you know the answers are in the Bible, number one. The second thing I want to point out to all of you listening, uh, the second thing is I really want to encourage all of us to make sure that we are stepping up our prayer life. Now, you say, well, why, Romancio, are you really talking about this prayer? Why? Because I want you to understand that the most important thing in your life is wisdom. I mean, think about it. If you had more, have you ever said, I wish I would have known then what it is that I know now? Well, what's the difference between then and now? The difference between then and now is wisdom. And frankly speaking, where does wisdom come from? Wisdom only comes from two places, baby. Number one, you will get wisdom from making mistakes. Now, keep banging your head against the wall if you want to. You know, the old folks used to say, what they say? A hard head will make a soft, be- will make a soft behind. In other words, wisdom, you will acquire wisdom uh, from making mistakes. You will. You will. But the other place to get wisdom from is mentors. And why is that? Because mentors, they have been there before. They have done it before. They've got the scars and the T-shirt to prove it, right? So who is the greatest of all mentors of all time? Obviously God, right? He's already defeated Satan. He's already defeated the world. You hear me? I said he's already defeated the same maze that you and I are stuck in right now. He's already defeated it. So, again, I'm saying to you it's very important. One of the things that I've learned, and I haven't read the whole Bible. I have not. I'm a long ways from there. But I can tell you in what I've studied and been studying, one of the things I've seen from both men and women in the Bible, that those prophets that really would go before God on a consistent basis and would pray, and would pray, I mean literally pray, and ask God for his wisdom on that specific matter. What matter am I talking about? Health issues, relationship issues, money issues. All the, It doesn't matter what it is, promotion of your next job or your next business, or should you start a business or whatever. All of those things that I can tell you, I really want to encourage you to step up your prayer life. Why? Because, listen to what I'm about to say next. It is so powerful that when God's favor comes on you in your endeavors, that's really, I hope hope you're taking notes. It is such a powerful thing when God's favor comes among you and whatever you're doing. Now, what does that break that down? That doesn't mean that just because you have the favor of God that you will not have any mistakes. You won't have any pain in your life. It does not mean that at all. So do not... Um, interpret what I'm saying as though just because you pray, all of a sudden God is going to spare you from having any sort of challenges in your life or whatever. That is not the truth at all, okay? Now, one thing I do want to point out to you really quickly is that it's, 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 it's always a good idea, it's always a good idea to, here, let me show you real quickly here, guys. All right, I want to read something to you really quickly here. Hold on one second here. I want to read something to you really quick. It uh, literally just, I think you're going to really like why I'm suggesting to you that uh, it's super important for you to always pray before you do anything. It's, it's all, it's, I'm just before you do anything, guys. And uh, I, I want to just say this one sentence that, I just I wrote it down here. Give me just a second here, guys. I'm going to find it right now for you. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. I'm going to find it for you here in just a second here. I know I have it. Give me one second here, guys. Okay. Oh, here it is right here. here it is. Okay, I got it. All right, here it is. You never have to recover 
from a good start. You see, again, you never have to recover from a good start. And what are we talking about? What we're saying there is, again, how many times when you and I, we've done things and then we come back around and we say, man, I wish I would have known then what I know now. Well, again, sometimes that can be avoided because if we really go before God and we ask for his wisdom, uh, his wisdom now can be with us as we begin to chart our course, as we begin to do what we do. And there's nothing like having the favor of God on you uh, because it will eliminate uh, pitfalls. It will eliminate some mistakes and pitfalls. It really, really, really will. So, again, I'm echoing the point of, again, the answers to all of our trials and our tribulations, frankly speaking, are in the Bible. I want to encourage you to step up your prayer life. I really want to encourage you to do that. Uh, God will speak to you, absolutely. He will give you an answer to whatever it is you're asking. Uh, Now, in saying that, I want to let you know, guys, that he'll give you an answer, but sometimes you have to be still. You've got to get quiet so that you can hear. And I want to talk to you about being alone. I want to talk to you about being alone in a busy world. That is not the theme of today's call. We're going to talk about the price of progress. That's the theme of today's call. But before, I'm setting it up before we get there. So I want to talk to you about being alone and how important it is when you're alone and you've already you, you've prayed, okay? And, and see, remember, when we pray to God, right, that is us inviting God into our situation, right? That's us notify or not notifying him, but inviting him into our situation, looking for help, right? But see, it's when we read God's word that he then reveals answers. That's one of the ways that God will give you an answer to your prayers. It's through his word. Hint, hint, clue, clue, which is why I'm saying you want to make sure you step up your prayer life and you want to actually divert, you want to revert back to your Bible because all your answers are there. But there are other ways that God will also answer you. And I'm not going to go through the 11 ways that God speaks to us, but I will just tell you God will speak to you. The most common way, not the only way, I repeat, the most common way that God will speak to you is through the reading of his word. Because when we pray to God, that's us talking to him. When we read God's word, that's God talking back to us, okay? But again, that's not the only way that he will talk to you. Sometimes God will talk through people, vision, dreams. There's there's 11 different ways that God confirms or speaks to us. But my point that I want to make clear is that God will answer you. He will give you an answer, okay? And so the reason I say that is because when you are alone, you can hear God. You know, in the Bible, it talks about how even Jesus, the Messiah, right, our Redeemer, right, it talks about how Jesus Christ, the Son of God, how he literally would go spend time alone consistently to be before God. Now, wait a minute. You're Mr. Almighty. You know everything, and you still have a discipline to go spend time alone with God? That's, to me, very, very encouraging, very encouraging. It really speaks volumes to me of the importance of us getting alone. Now you say, well, wait a minute, I got a busy life. I got a lot going on. Listen, last time I checked, when you take a shower, you're alone, typically. Last time I checked, when you take a bath, most time, unless you, you know, trying to do a little rendezvous, most time, you're alone, right? So, I mean, look, there's no excuse. Definitely when you go to the restroom, uh, that, that, this we know, you're definitely alone when you're on that toilet, okay? So, again, no excuses. We, you got to create the time. God is a very jealous God, but I'm trying to say to you, if you want to quicken and, and I know that that's what all of us want. If you want quicker revelation, revelation. Now, I didn't say go ask Google, which is a big mistake when you're trying to get wisdom on how to live your life and answers to some of the, the many of the issues that are, are in our lives, and you go into Google. That is not the source you need to be going to. Google has its proper place. We're talking about going to your father, going before God. That's what we're talking about. Okay, And when you go before God through your prayer and your petitions, I'm saying you have to spend some time alone so that God can talk back to you, so that you can hear. God doesn't talk it the way I'm talking. He doesn't yell. God doesn't scream. It's a little still voice. But if you're not quiet, if you're, you're, you know what I'm saying, if you're not, you won't hear it. 
and then you'll turn around and say, well, God never answers me. He never gives me any instructions, and that's not true. God does not like you more than he likes me. He does not like me more than he likes you. That is not true. I don't care how much sin you've done. We've all sinned. Ain't nobody. I'm not perfect. Get that out your mind. So don't, it ain't got anything to do with the fact that you've, let me, listen, let, let's get this straight. Jesus died on the cross for you and I. So, in other words, he's already paid for all the sin you'd already done and all the sin you're going to do. Do you understand me? So understand your sins or whatever you did last night, 15 minutes ago, has nothing to do with God giving you an answer to the challenges that are before you. Okay? He already paid the price for that. So I'm saying to you, get yourself in a quiet space where you can hear God talk to you. And I'm telling you, listen to me, I know you may think this is crazy, which I don't care, because, see, when you're doing what you're supposed to do, you don't care who's looking, you don't care what nobody else says. If everybody tells you no but God tells you yes, let me tell you something. All you need is one yes from God, and a billion people can tell you, can tell you no. One yes from God, and a billion can tell you no, I promise you, that yes from God is all you need to put you exactly where you want to be. So I'm not concerned of who says what. I don't remember about all that. Listen, what I'm saying to you is when you get by yourself, it is an amazing feeling when God will confirm something you've been praying about. When God speaks to you, you feel like, oh, my God, he has not forgotten about me. It's like you feel like you've got, uh, you got a one-on-one appointment from God. What? It's a beautiful feeling, I'm just telling you. It's called a confirmation. God will actually confirm it. He'll send he'll, and it. And I'm sorry, your friends can't do that for you. But God can, only God. But I'm telling you, you do have to put yourself in a position so that you can hear. You do got to put yourself in a position, all right? Let me tell you one last little trick that uh, – I shouldn't call it a trick, but, you know, we just, we're just having some fun here. But, but let me tell you one last little tip that will definitely help speed up um, answers to your prayers. And I thank God for having such a wonderful mom. My mom is absolutely incredible. I love my father as well, but my mom has been very, very diligent very, very faithful in her faith ever since I've known her, and I'm 43. I'm telling you guys, I have been trying to find some, some, some holes in this lady's armor. I mean, I've been looking for them. I'm telling you, and I'm telling you, I got the FBI, the CSI, the RBI, the WDI. I got all, 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 all of them uh, sources out there, and I'm telling you, we can't find nothing. We've been looking. I mean, we, I'm talking about we look at one in the morning. We look at, you know, one in the afternoon. We look on Sundays. We look seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and we can't find this lady off of her game. In other words, she is who she is. She does what she does. She represents what she represents. And I'm thankful to, I'm thankful to her for that. And I can tell you that um, it was just something that in the course of my conversations recently that I had with her that I want to share this with you. Um, and that is, this is a little tip that I'm going to give you that uh, just, just today, let me just tell you just today, uh, just early, first of all, my mom told me, she said, listen, if you really want to speed up the answers to your prayers, one of the things you should do when you're praying is don't make your prayers all about you. I said, well, what do you mean? Well, I need this and I need that and this is what I'm waiting for, right? And she said, yeah, 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 but again, God knows what you need. <laughs> Once again, a lot of times, God, look here, now you know I ain't got no gas right now. Now, God, now you know, did you, did you know, Father, that this is going on and that's, Again, <laughs> this is God you're talking to, right? So you don't need to tell God all of it. He knows what's going on, right? So, so she said, whenever you pray, don't, if you want to speed things up for yourself, always remember this, John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave. So if you really, 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 really want to understand the spirit of God, the spirit of God is about love, and love is about giving, Love is about giving, okay? So if you really want to align yourself with God, speak God's language, etc., well, one of the fastest ways to do that is really to connect with God through your prayer life where you're basically about, where it's all about you giving. So in other words, instead of you always praying about your issues, the tip that she taught me was to focus a portion of your prayer. So let's just say you're praying for 10 minutes. I don't know. I'm just making up 10 minutes here. Let's say five minutes, Lord, you help me with this. Lord, I need your answers on this. Lord, I need you here. I need you there. God, help me, help, help, help me, help me, help me, right? But let's just say another five minutes of your prayer session 
has nothing to do with what you want from God for you. Instead, you are, doing, you are interceding where you are praying for other people, the world. How about Texas? How about all the people that are dying and from the coronavirus and all this stuff and people that are sick and people that are in all these, you know, uh, hospitals and all this stuff? In other words, putting the focus on others, it brings the answers that you're looking for faster. And remember, one of the things we always say on this call every Sunday is we always say that what we make happen for others, God will make happen for us, right? Because that's a spirit of giving. That's, that's God's spirit. So in other words, what I'm saying, write that down. That's very, very profound. And I'm going to tell you guys, hold on, not only is that very profound, I want, to em- I want to emphasize that one more time. Again, in your prayer life, instead of pray- always praying for what you need, get the, get the light off of you and begin to pray about, pray for others. In other words, intercede. Intercede simply means you're praying on others' behalf. Pray on others. And you don't have to, hey, hey, Bob, I want to let you know I've been praying. But you don't have to say that, okay? You don't got to go to, hey, hey, Tamara, I want you to know I've been interceding for you. I just want you to know. No, you don't got to say anything. You just, you just do it. And that's where you're taking your time, which is getting ready to lead right into our next point. It's where you're taking your time and you are making the sacrifice of praying for other people. I remember, ooh, I remember when Jesus was on the cross. And what did he say? He said, Father, this is while he's being beaten. We've all seen this imagery before. While he's being beaten, right? And he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So there he is. He is being beaten, and he still has the Spirit of God with him. He's still saying. He's still giving. In other words, while he's taking blows, while he's being sacrificed, he's still saying, forgive them. In other words, he's talking about the people who beat them. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. They have no clue who they're beating right now. They don't even know what they're doing. Forgi- so again, I, can, I need everyone listening to the sound of my voice. I want all of us to get this. If we want one of the ways to quicken the answers to our prayers is to begin to intercede for other people, other people other people, to pray for other people, right? Now, watch this. My mother also told me three days ago, she said, Romarcio, God placed it in my spirit to tell you, you need to read the book of Nehemiah. And I said, yeah, mom, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And I really meant it. I really meant it. I just, you know, been doing other things and doing this and doing that, and, you know. And, uh, but last night I talked to her and I said, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And I said, okay, today I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure I make some time to read the book of Nehemiah. And ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something, and I hope you're really listening. I began to start reading the book of Nehemiah literally about two and a half hours ago. And let me tell you guys, as I'm reading the book of Nehemiah, uh, let me just tell you, I'm only six or seven pages into the book of Nehemiah. I'm not even six or seven pages into it. And as I begin to read the very first page, it says that one of the biggest attributes about Nehemiah, one of the biggest things about him, is that he would always pray to God before doing anything, number one. Number two he would always intercede for other people. And I'm sitting here, and I had to underline that. I had to underline that because one of the prayers that I've been praying and wanting God to confirm for me, uh, God has given me a very large mission, a very large goal, uh, mission that I'm supposed to complete. It's very large. I don't want to discuss it, but it's gigantic, right? You can't do this type of goal without God. And I said, God, I need you to give me specific instructions on how to make this thing happen that that you want me to do. Because you put this in my spirit to do it, but I can't do this by myself, and you know that. And, God, I'm I'm doing the very best, and I know it's going to come to pass, but I need you 
to give me some specific instructions. And right now, two hours ago today, I'm reading the book of Nehemiah. I'm not even, I've only read six pages of it. That's it. And on page number one, it's giving me the confirmation to a written prayer that I wrote down last Tuesday, and it said, God, I want you to give me specific instructions on how to do this thing. And right here in the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah is a huge, gigantic builder, and I'm not going to tell you the story. I want you to go read it for yourself. He's a builder, right? And it says the two things he does, number one, he always prayed to God for wisdom before he ever started anything. Always. They emphasize this. The second thing it says, he always interceded. What does that mean? It means he prayed for others. He prayed for others. And what did I just tell you that my mom just taught me just a few days ago? If you really want to quicken things, so isn't it so amazing? Once, but, but here's my point to you. If I wouldn't have spent time alone, listen to me, for all you mothers and fathers out there, all you busy people, if I wouldn't have spent, well, two things. Number one, if I wouldn't have obeyed. <laughs> so let's back up here. Number one, if I wouldn't have obeyed. And number two, if I wouldn't have spent time alone, I would have never received the confirmation the confirmation to a question I was asking, specific instructions. It clearly says in there, because he went before God and prayed, God not only gave him vision, but God gave him specific instructions on how to rebuild the wall. It specifically says that. Now, why am I pointing that out to all of you listening? Because what God will do for Nehemiah, he will also do for you. If we learn to speak God's language. And God's language is when you go before him humbly in prayer, all right, and I'm telling you now, don't make the prayer all about you. I mean, go ahead. Some of it need, some of it need to be about you. That's fine. But some of the other part of the prayer needs to be about other people. And now you now are in that giving spirit versus the other one. It's just all about God bless me, help me, 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 me. You see what I'm saying? So I really hope you are listening here today to what it is, the picture that I'm painting here for you. I think this is absolutely right on time, and it sets us up for the remaining 15, 20 minutes here of the theme of today's call, which is the price for progress, the price we pay that we must pay for progress. That is the theme of today's call, and I got to tell you guys, listen, the price of progress That theme in itself, man, it it spells it out right there. Every single one of us, we all want to make progress in our life. We all want to go to the next level. We all want progress, you know. We all do. Everybody wants progress. And clearly, from the beginning of time, in order for things to get better, there's a price that we must pay. There's a price that we must pay. For us to have the freedoms and everything that we enjoy today, Jesus Christ paid a dear price, right? For those of us that are all human beings living today, the mother, the woman that was on that gurney pushing out that baby, you know, all that stuff she went through, she paid a dear price, okay? Everywhere we look, anytime you want to make progress in your life, I want to really just make it simple and plain for you to understand there's going to have to be – it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you something, okay? Okay? This is not bad news. This is good news. So let me ask you a question, and I want you to answer this in your own mind. What, when you think of your spiritual life, are you happy with the level that you're at now? Do you want to get to another level? Now, what does another level represent? I mean, it depends upon how far you want to take this. I mean, you literally... The Bible says we are to subdue the world. That means we have all the dominion, all the power, financial, relationship, spirituality. It doesn't mean that we're not going to have adversities. Matter of fact, you're going to have a ton of adversities, okay? But we do have the power. How do you want to learn how to use that power? I don't know. How far do you want to take this thing? My question to you is do you want to get to the next level spiritually where you begin to manifest? In other words, I look at it this way. Do you want to experience heaven on earth? (laughs) 
or do you just want to wait until you die and then experience heaven? No, I want to experience heaven on earth. I, 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 I'm 43 now. I'm in the second half, right? I, I want to go ahead and I want to experience heaven on earth. That's what I want. I, I want to be able to just be, you know, I, I want to manifest as much as I can, right? So, again, question number one is do you want to increase do you want to go to the next level spiritually, right? That's one question for you. All right. The second question I have for you, financially. When you think of finances, you know, are you, are you completely content? Are you set? You know, everything is okay? You, or do you want to grow to the next level there as well, okay? All right. Third question, relationship. I know you're married. I know you've been married for 30 years, 40 years, or hoping to get married or whatever it is. Um, is would you like to see improvement there? Would you like to see that go to another level? Single, wanting to be married, whatever, relationship, hoping to get married, whatever. Do you want to get to the next level there? Okay? All right? Your, with your children, you know, would you like a better relationship with your children? In other words, do you want to get to the next level? What about your health, okay? So here's what I'm saying. Whenever you want to, get, to grow to the next level in anything, I want you to let you know there's going to have to be a price that you have to pay to make progress. Progress does not happen free. There's a price you have to pay to get better with your tennis swing. There's a price you have to pay to pay to get better, to get stronger, healthy, right? There's a price you have to pay just to even get close to God. Did you know there's a price you have to pay? Yes, it is. You got to actually spend time with them. How are you going to have a relationship with someone that you don't spend any time with? So it takes discipline just to spend time with someone. There's a price you have to pay. So I want to make it really clear to you that a lot, the Bible does talk about that, you know, for those of us that choose to want to walk that life, that we are set apart. We are to live set apart. And, you know, I, I'm not here condemning anyone because I make more, more mistakes than any of us. But I'm telling you that, that, that if we want certain things in our lives, I'm just making it clear to everyone there is a price that we will have to pay. Now, all of us are under construction. All of us are constantly trying to improve, and we're under, we're under construction. That means we're making mistakes on a daily basis, and we're very thankful of God's grace. His grace and his mercies are new every single morning. Right? So, again, my point is it's going to cost for you to make progress. Let's think about it. There you are. You now just became an entrepreneur, and you're trying to go to the next level in your life as an entrepreneur, but you're still hanging around old, toxic people that are bad for you, but you're hoping to go to higher height. I know a lot of times people tend to think that they're very strong, and that they can hang around this person or that person, and they won't influence them. That's not true. The longer you hang around something or someone that's not good for you, the subtler, write this down, the more subtle, the more subtle, the more subtle you're being influenced. Let me say it again. The longer you put yourself in an environment that is not healthy for you, the more subtle the influence is actually taking place, meaning you are subtly being influenced. So, again, if you really want to get to that next level, let me give it to you like this. If you want to be blessed over here, you're going to have to let go of something over there. Write that down. Ooh, that's powerful. That's it right there. That's it. Let me say it again. If you want to be blessed over here, if you want to get to the next level over here in life, you're going to have to let go of something over there. Now, I'm going to let you go ahead and digest that. I'm going to let you figure that out. I'm going to let you personalize and pray about what I just said so it can become very clear in your mind what that is. Because, see, a lot of times we think this does not go with that. We think, okay, this won't affect that. Trust me, I used to think this way all the time, Okay. And what God is trying to teach us that if we truly want to make real progress in our lives, it's interesting how God will take, he, he actually will use a completely different 
building block. Now, let's go here for a second. God will completely, he will use something completely different to build you in that area that has nothing to do with the thing that you really wanted. Let me give you an example. Let's just, let's talk about money for a second. You, here it is, you, you know, you, you want to make money, you want to make more money, more money, more money, right? And you want to be rich and you want to do all these things, right? Well, sometimes God, what he will do is he will, he will take you in an area and he will work on something else that you think has nothing to do with money. You think it has nothing to do with money because if you were telling the story, you would say, well, what does this have to do with the money I want to make over there? And you think they're completely separate. That's what you think. But God, what he will do in his wisdom, he will use that thing over there to build you for this thing over here. So that's why we say to you, if you're wanting to be blessed over here, oftentimes you're going to have to let go of something over there. The price you pay for progress. There is a price that you're going to have to pay. It's not a bad thing. It's a foretelling thing. It's a good thing to let you know, okay, I'm going to have to make some adjustments. You know, I was talking with a pastor friend of mine the other day and uh, someone I'm very close to, and uh, he specifically said to me, he says, listen, Romancio, and he was praying and so forth, and God had sent him a special message just for me, and he said, God told me to tell you that that thing that you've really been working on and believing for and that big goal that you have that God has given you, he told me to tell you that it's definitely going to happen for you, 100%. It's definitely going to happen for you. But God also told me to tell you this, Romancio. He says, the same intensity that you've been going forward trying to get it, talking about that goal that I'm, that I'm after, that same intensity that you've been putting forward to go get it, he said, Romancio, God told me to tell you, it's going to require that exact same intensity for you to keep it once you get it. Now, that was profound. Once again, the price you pay for progress. In other words, the same intensity that we're putting into getting, that I'm putting into getting it, it's going to require that same intensity once you have it to keep it. In other words, again, I'm making the point there is a price that we have to pay for progress. It doesn't just happen automatically. You don't get to go from fat to skinny, but you didn't, make, you didn't pay a price of discipline via your eating regimen and working out. There's a price you're going to have to pay. And so what I would do and what I wish my son was here to hear is that as a man or a woman, one of the things that I respect is I respect people who are not lazy people that are willing to do the work. I don't care how fast it takes you to get the work done. I just care that it's nice knowing that you're willing to do the work because if, you know, it's, you're only going to get what you want in this lifetime, not just by believing with your mouth. You're going to have to put forth the real work. You're going to have to put on your hard hat and steel toe boots, and you're going to have to get out there and go put forth some real energy and do some real work to bring the manifestation of that thing that you're believing for, whatever that is. And that's both to men and women. And so listen, as long as you are willing to do the work, then you've already won whatever it is that you're going after. Listen, I know sometimes we all want it to happen faster. We all do. But remember what I talked about, about the building blocks. God is building you. He's preparing you, okay? He's sharpening you, you know? So don't think of it as that you're just not going to get what it is you're after. You will. But rephrase it. Look at it differently. You're being prepared. You're being prepared. You're being prepared. You are being prepared. A lot of times, some of the things we want, we want them so bad, but we never ask ourselves, if we can handle the very thing that we're asking for. We never ask that. We just automatically assume that we can handle it. And sometimes God is not giving us the thing that we want at the moment because we're truly just not ready for it. Now, how do you know if you're ready? Again, go to God in your prayer life, be consistent, 
and be, go before him asking for wisdom. Again, praying for the things that you want, no problem. Also praying for others. And I promise you, as you get still and you begin to hear from God, God will tell you it's your season. He'll tell you right now it's your time. You've been prepared for this. Or he'll tell you, I'm still grooming you. He, he trust me, God will speak to you about your specific issues. He will personalize it just for you. You know, for me, when I pray to God, I always say, God, listen, as you, as you speak to me and you give me the answers to my questions, Lord, I need you to make those answers so clear for me that even Ray Charles, who's blind, can see it. Because I, I don't want to be confused. I don't want to think that was you, but that really wasn't you. I need it to be so clear for me that even a blind man can see it. That's what I need. I need it to be radiant clear, right? So that way I can know that was God, okay? And so I hope you're tying this whole call together here because nothing I said today was off. Nothing I, everything I said went together with the next point. And so, again, if you, I want to encourage you to re-listen to this call, re-listen to this call, because I know that each and every single one of us, we all are waiting on something. We all are. And I just want you to know that everywhere I look in the Bible and I see the great works of some of the prophets, one of the things that I'm really, really interested in and I'm really encouraged by is I'm really encouraged by two things. Number one, knowing that God is really a respecter of covenants. We're not going to get into that today, but God is so serious about covenants. And what is a covenant? For, you know, let's just break it down. Covenant basically says, you do this, I'll do that. Basically, you do this, I'll do that. And God, that's, I'm telling you, the way God set it up, he's real big on covenants. First thing. The second thing that really encourages me when I look at the prophets within the Bible and I begin to study them, I begin to, to, to look at how they paid a price, all of them. They had to pay a price. They had to pay a price to make progress. Now you say, well, why would I care about something like this? The reason I care about this, because this lets us know you won't get the promotion that you want, baby, for free. You, listen to me. I'm talking, yeah, you. I know. I know you, you've been waiting on Mrs. Wright for 40 years. And you waiting and you waiting and you waiting and you waiting for Mrs. Wright. I'm letting you know you're not going to get the promotion that you desire for free. It's just not going to happen. Because if you get it, the question is, will you be able to keep it? So it lets me know and it encourages me when I see this, that God is really big on covenants. He's really big on covenants. I mean, he's really big on that, okay? And it also blesses me tremendously to notice that the prophets in the Bible, that they literally understood they had to pay a price. You have to pay a price. There's a price you're going to have to pay to see the miracles and the manifestations that God has promised how do we know this to be true? If God sent his only begotten son to die for you and I, in other words, paid a price, why should he give you everything for free? Now, listen, salvation is free. Asking, listen, listen, salvation is free, but it's only free because Jesus paid the price. So what am I saying to you? I'm saying as you go forward and whatever those ambitions and goals that you have, and again, I'm not just talking to people who are trying to realize money. I'm not just talking to people who are trying to get married or have a baby. No, I'm talking to everybody. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what your personality is, introvert, extrovert, I'm talking to you. I'm letting you know principles of how it works. You're going to have to pay a price. So what does this mean? You want to look at your life, look at your daily routine, look at your habits, and ask yourself, can I do better in my habits can I do better in creating better habits? Now, don't try and eat the whole apple in one bite, okay? Just take it one bite at a time. Don't try and work on everything at the same time, confuse yourself and do nothing. Just pick one thing that you can just, you know, that you can just improve a better habit in. Let me give you an example. Let me give you the one you should start with, praying every day. I don't care if you pray for two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, twenty minutes, thirty minutes, whatever. Pray every day, every day, every single day. 
just the intention that you go before God to say, Lord, I thank you for waking me up this morning. I'm trying to start a new relationship with you, and I just want to first of all say thank you because I know that there are a lot of people out there that would probably love to trade places with the life I have today. So I want to say thank you. I also want to actually pray for all those that have sinned against me. I want to pray for all the sins, ask for forgiveness for all the sins I've done, okay, right? And then also, Lord, I want to pray that our world becomes a better world. I want to pray for our president, Father. I want to pray for uh, the virus that's going on. I want to pray for what's happening in all the third developing countries of the world. I want to pray for what's going on in Texas, that those people get power again. You see what I'm saying? You know, and you just kind of, you know, intertwine your prayer with your request, but also praying for others. That's the, how about you just start there? Just start having the discipline to do that. And then one thing I would ask you to infuse into your prayer is ask God for his wisdom. God, I thank you in advance for giving me your wisdom, your wisdom to solve the problems of my life. I can't do it without you. I thank you in advance for downloading to me specific instructions on how to get better in my life. Just do that. Just, that's what I mean. Just don't try and eat the apple all in one bite. Just take it one bite at a time. Just start. I'm just telling you, it is so comforting to see. That, are, you, are you really telling me the answers to the things that I'm faced with in this lifetime are already written in the Bible and all I got to do is just start following the path? That's it. Every single person in the Bible except Jesus, they all sin. Do you hear me? Every single person in the entire book have all sinned and made mistakes. Now, doesn't that make you feel a lot better? But watch this. They are all the prophets that actually learned how to speak the language of God. Okay? And we've been talking about this. Those that actually, you know, that, you know, that actually learn how to speak God's language and do God's principles, they were tremendously blessed, both men and women. So that's comforting to know that you'll never be perfect. And as they say, as the old adage says, the journey of a thousand miles, it begins with a single step. And if you mess up today, thank God for God's mercies that he'll give you to start all over again tomorrow. And if you mess up tomorrow, thank again, thank God again for his mercies and his grace that he will give you. He will give you grace and mercy all over again the next day. You know, I recently heard it said this way, and I've never heard it said any better. It was by, many of you know, Joyce Myers. And literally, I love the fact that I just heard this. If you complain, you will remain the same. But if you praise, you will be raised. Ladies and gentlemen, look, I love you guys dearly. I'm the California Kid. This has been another excellent call. I hope that you will share this call with those that you love and care for. And I'll see you guys all back here next week. Thank you for listening. Goodbye, everybody.